Number 11. Soviet Tank Graveyard During the Cold War arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union, the USSR began producing the BDRM-2 armored vehicle in the city of Nizhny Novgorod. More than 7,000 of these tank-like vehicles were built between 1962 and 1989, many of which were exported to other countries and are still in use today. The Soviet Union also manufactured an eight-wheeled personnel carrier called the BTR-70 that still remains in use by the Russian Marine Corps and some other militaries to this day. In 2018, curious urban explorer Dan Stalk posted a shocking video of a vehicle graveyard filled with BDRM-2s and BTR-70s. He didn't reveal the site's exact location, and the translated subtitles about the property are confusing at best. But it's clear, based on the footage, that somewhere in Eastern Europe, there's a collection of Soviet military vehicles that were simply left behind for one reason or another. Number 10. Secret Object Number 6 there's a mysterious semicircular structure along the coast of Peter the Great Bay in Russia's Primorye region. Its official name is the Submarine Shelter Pavlovskoy, but to the Soviets who built it, it was simply called Secret Object No. 6. Because the site was kept top secret, it's unclear when exactly construction began. Experts believe that it was probably built sometime during the 1960s and that it functioned as a submarine shelter that was designed to withstand a nuclear attack. The site consists of a three-story network of tunnels built into a cliff rock. In the event of an emergency, submarines would enter through a 1,608-foot tunnel with six-foot-thick concrete walls. Living and working spaces were located within another tunnel. As the Soviet Union ran out of money during the late 1980s, construction on the site ground to a halt, and it was never finished being built. Operations ceased in 1991 when the U.S. and the Soviet Union entered the first of a series of agreements that required the USSR to stop building underground maritime structures. Known as START-1, the treaty also required the Soviets to seal off the entrances to some of their bases. Just four months after the agreement went into effect, the Soviet Union collapsed and the base was abandoned. Many of its tunnels remain sealed today, and visitors aren't allowed due to the area's high radiation count. Number 9. Vent Hill Farm Station In Warrington, Virginia, there's a Cold War museum that boasts an impressive collection of artifacts. It's located within a decommissioned communications base known as the Vent Hill Farm Station. Built during World War II, the site originally functioned as a cryptography school and a refitting station for signal units returning to the U.S. before being redeployed overseas. During the Cold War, the Army and the National Security Agency used the base for intercepting Soviet military and diplomatic correspondence and for other signals and electronic warfare intelligence. Due to its top-secret nature, it's unclear exactly what went on there, but experts have theorized that the facility's surveillance target included foreign embassies in Washington, D.C. The base was decommissioned in 1993 as a cost-saving measure, and its personnel were all relocated elsewhere. It closed for good in 1997 and became the property of the Virginia State Vent Hill Farms Economic Development Authority two years later. Some of the buildings house engineering and technology companies, dance and gymnastics schools, a winery, a brewery, and the FAA's Air Traffic Control System Command Center. The Cold War Museum is located within a two-story building that was used for storing supplies when the base was in operation. It opened in 2011 and welcomes visitors on the weekends. Number 8. North Concord Air Force Base Located in East Mountain, Vermont, the North Concord Air Force Base opened in 1956 as a radar base for monitoring early signs of a nuclear attack. Situated on a mountain in one of the most remote places in the state, the location was perfect for a military facility that wanted its existence to be kept as quiet as possible. The 174 service members who operated the base lived slightly lower on the mountain in a neighborhood of ten and steel huts called Quonset Village. They worked around the clock to guard the station from potential intruders and protected the radar towers with inflatable white domes that sat on top of the structures. In 1962, the base's name was changed to the Lindenville Air Force Station. Just a year later, the government shut it down because it got too expensive to run, especially because technology was advancing rapidly and rendering the station's equipment obsolete. An alleged UFO sighting happened near the station in 1961. A local couple named Betty and Barney Hill later claimed that they were abducted by aliens just a few hours later. While their claims have never been proven, nobody's been able to explain what the personnel at the base saw that night. Night. The ruins of the abandoned base remain at the site today, but it's dangerous to explore due to its deteriorating state. During the 90s, someone even fell to their death while investigating an old tower on the property. There are numerous local legends about the site, including stories about suspicious characters lurking around the base, hauntings, and of course, aliens. Would you like to visit this abandoned Air Force base? Tell us in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 7. Urbine 
Named after the nearby Erb River, Erbin was a secret Soviet town located in what's now Latvia. Most of the people who lived there were scientists, military personnel, and workers who were employed at a nearby Soviet radio astronomy center known as Zvegznit. Neither of these places appeared on any map, and the latter was used for intercepting NATO communications throughout the Cold War. The astronomy center originally consisted of three large radio telescopes, including two that were linked by a tunnel and a communications base. One of the telescopes, known as RT-32, was among the world's top five most powerful telescopes at the time. Operations began around 1967. By then, local residents and nearby villages had been relocated elsewhere, and the area became inaccessible to most people. The clandestine site remained a secret for decades to come as it remained staffed exclusively with personnel directly from Moscow. In 1993, two years after Russia recognized the region's independence, the Soviet military finally left Erbin. Two of the telescopes were rendered unusable, and the third was dismantled. Visible remnants of Erbin were left behind in the form of a part apartment buildings and other structures, which were in perfectly good working condition when they were abandoned. But time has taken its toll on the deserted village, which has also been damaged by looters and scavengers who have more or less gutted it of anything of resale value. Anyone who manages to reach the remote wooded site is free to explore it as they please. Number 6. Cold War Relics in the Caribbean Outside of Cuba, signs of a former Soviet presence are extremely rare throughout the Caribbean. One unique exception can be found outside Pearls Airport in Grenada, which sits along the island's northeastern coast. It hasn't been used for commercial air service in many years and mostly functions as grazing land for farm animals. Back in the early 80s, the Soviet Union provided aid to Grenada for the construction of the Maurice Bishop International Airport, which is the island's current airport. Supplies and personnel were ferried from Cuba into Pearls, where a number of abandoned aircraft from the era remain to this day. The site is home to an old Cubana Airlines plane as well as a Soviet crop duster. Both planes were damaged when the U.S. invaded Grenada in 1983 upon hearing about its Soviet ties. They've been there ever since. Visitors can walk right onto the site and explore inside the aircraft, but are cautioned to be mindful of the cow and goat waste that they're likely to encounter at the site and to be sensitive to locals' thoughts and memories of the invasion, which have left emotional wounds for some. Number 5. SFRY Submarine Tunnels on the remote Croatian island of Vis in the Adriatic Sea, there's a series of dark, eerie submarine tunnels dating back to World War II. Recognizing the island's strategic importance for fighting the Nazis, Yugoslav leader Josip Broz Tito implemented numerous military installations throughout the island. Included among them was the sprawling 12-mile network of underground tunnels. Known as the SFRY tunnels, the complex functioned as a submarine base and also contained housing for those who ran it. After World War II, Vis became the Yugoslavian military's central base. It remained an important site for a 50-year period of communism, during which time the tunnels occasionally served as a hiding spot for the military. The island's 3,600 civilian residents were watched closely, and their movement was severely restricted. They were banned from going places that they once freely enjoyed. The base at Vis was abruptly abandoned when Croatia gained its independence in 1991. This came as great news to locals, who not only regained their freedom of movement, but had long been campaigning to open the island up to tourists. Since then, civilians have repurposed some of the deserted military structures into wine cellars and for other uses, but many remain abandoned. Number 4. Sazan Island Submarine Base Located in the Mediterranean Sea off Albania's southern coast, Sazan is the country's largest island. It's home to a Cold War-era Soviet base along with an extensive network of underground tunnels that once housed a weapons factory. It was built to withstand a nuclear attack and was stocked with food, water, and other emergency provisions. The base is technically still operational and contains beds, kitchen items, and other necessities that someone might need if they plan to stay for a long time. But the site is manned by just two soldiers and is abandoned for the most part. Today, the site functions as a naval base that monitors pirating and smuggling activities between Italy and Albania. In addition to the military base, Sazan Island is known for its unique wildlife, including species that aren't seen on the European mainland. Since 2015, the Albanian government has opened the island to visitors several times. But there's no electricity or drinking water, so overnight excursions probably won't be offered anytime soon. And the future of Sazan Island remains unclear for now. Number 3. Lina Hall there's a large abandoned arena that sits along the harbor in the Estonian capital of Tallinn. Known as Lina Hall, it was built in anticipation of the 1980 Summer Olympics. The games were held in Moscow, but the city had no place to hold the sailing event, which was instead held in Tallinn. At the time, Estonia was part of the Soviet Union. Despite its imposing size, Lina Hall does not dominate the landscape. It was purposely designed not to obstruct the view of the medieval city center, so it sits low and is accessible via multiple descending staircases. After the Olympics, it hosted concerts and housed an ice 
ice skating rink. Over the years, the building fell into decay, and in 2009, the skating rink closed. The concert hall shuttered its doors the following year. Determined to preserve the disused historic structure, city authorities searched far and wide for someone to invest in Lena Hall. But they failed to find a financial backer and decided to renovate the building themselves in 2015. Progress has been slow going, and the future of the abandoned venue remains uncertain. Lena Hall is closed to the public, but remains visible from the outside. Since its closure, it's become covered in graffiti and surrounded by overgrowth, which has made its way through the cracking concrete walkways. Number 2. Born Solonowo Located in northwestern Poland, the town of Born Solonowo functioned as a secret Soviet military base from 1945 to 1992. During that time, it did not appear on any map, and it wasn't until the Soviet Union's collapse that it was transferred to the Polish government's control. But the village's roots date much farther back than World War II. Its history can be traced back to the 16th century when just a handful of people inhabited the area. After the war ended, the Soviet Red Army took over jurisdiction of an area encompassing the town and two military bases. Born Solonowo came to be one of the largest military camps among the faction of the USSR's troops stationed throughout Poland. It managed to remain a secret for nearly 50 years until the Polish government reached an agreement for the Red Army's withdrawal following the collapse of communism. After the last of the soldiers left in 1992, Born Solonowo officially became a civilian town. The following year it was open to the public. Most of the people who first moved there were Polish repatriates who had been forcibly resettled in Siberia and Kazakhstan half a century earlier. And while an estimated 5,000 people lived there today, several of the former buildings that were used for military purposes remain abandoned and derelict, serving as an eerie reminder of the Soviet era. Number 1. Olavsfern during the Cold War, the Norwegian government established a top-secret naval base north of the Arctic Circle known as Olavsfern. Built into a mountainside near the city of Tromsø, the structure was massive and secure with a 3,000-foot tunnel leading to the entrance. The facility contained housing, workshops, offices, ammunition depots, and a dry dock with enough room to store six submarines. There were also several dry docks that could store larger ships. From 1967 until 2002, the complex functioned as a Norwegian Royal Navy base. After losing its official military designation, it remained in operation until 2009 when it was closed down for good following the restructuring of the Norwegian Navy. For some time after that, Russian entities with connections to a state-owned company rented out the site. Experts became concerned that the Russians were carrying out secret military operations there, so in 2019 a Norwegian company with a reputation for cooperating with the government became the major shareholder of the property. It put an end to whatever the Russians were doing there and the site went back into use last year. It's currently being used by military units from Norway's allied countries including the Dutch Marines. Thanks for watching. Which one of these abandoned Cold War relics fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.